Yes. Hey. Dunderbutt. Here. I will give you a lollipop if you want. Yay! Lollipop. I'm going to thank you. Yes, thank you for me. Which color do you want? Um, I would like red. Red. Here. What color do you want? Red. I don't really want the lollipop. You don't? Here, go, close the door. Uh-oh. I'm on the... Hold, hold on one second. I got another invasion. Come in. I told them not to disturb you. Just run in here. Sorry. What's yeah, that? She brought all of bread, Where, where did that runnage it come from? It has tomato with it, though. Focaccio, very nice. Yay! Good. Can we give you lollipops? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and you can get right. one. Or um, I'll get one. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. And how about for this baby? No. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. How about okay. This baby orange. Okay, and I got you some ginger beer. Oh, thank you. All right, Marsh. So good to see you. Good. Dunavant. Dunavant. <laughs> Hi London, how are you doing? Hi London, hi London. How do you get it? Okay, it wasn't an, an, an invasion of kids and their and mothers too. All right. And once. Well, Marge, I've got a question from our A Anonymous. This was a very mature present that was given to me on my birthday. <laughs> Makes it sound like a like a um, Bengal, like a Calcutta or Bengal rickshaw. <laughs> and it was silly, silly gift, but that's <laughs> all right. What was the question? <laughs> you okay? You ready for this? I guess um, so. Okay, they said, last week you spoke of being invited back to ISKCON. No. And they I've heard that overcoming tests okay. of the subtle body, especially pratishta, desire for profit, adoration, distinction, Pardon? is most challenging obstacle to overcome in our journey back home to Godhead. What makes you overcome these types of obstacles? In particular, overcoming obstacles and temptations of being in a position of power in the metaphorical riches and royalty of an ISKCON environment compared to Sri Chaitanya Sauer's up not. Oh. But when did, when did I go back to ISKCON? I, I, I don't think I've been there for years. <laughs> now, you mentioned last week that um, you were speaking with a with a sannyasi from ISKCON, and he said, come back, you should come back to ISKCON. Oh, yeah, that was some 20-some years ago. I didn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> that was Trivikram Maharaj. And, uh -huh. and, and what you're saying, how did, how does one overcome Pratishta to go to the relative uh, lack of Pratishta in the, in the Sri Chaitanya Saraswati? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. It's a good question. Once, once I was talking with uh, one Indian man, and he said he described to me how he'd been to Mayapur, and he said they, that he saw an they at that time they had an elephant there. I don't know what they have there now. Maybe they have a whole circus, but they had an elephant. No, I'm joking. They had an elephant and they had other things, you know, exhibited there. And he said, it's so, it's so opulent. It's so grand. It's so beautiful. And I said, what would you, what would, how would you react if I told you at the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, there aren't any elephants, aren't any big exhibitions, but there, this was during the time of Guru Marsh. I said, but there, there is, very exalted 
pure soul, Srila Bhakti, a very exalted pure soul, Srila and a saint, Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Govinda Maharaj. What would you say? What would you say if I told you that even though it's not so big or developed or opulent, but still there are these saintly, very saintly Vaishnav devotees there, exalted souls? And he said, he said, oh Maharaj, we are, <laughs> what did he say? He said, we are the materialistic men. We're, we are not so much seeing like that. And he said, but at Mayapur, it was so grand, so wonderful. <laughs> so, so he more or less told me when I mentioned, what about seeing a saintly person at the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mani is telling me more or less, well, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't motivate us so much. <laughs> like, you can't imagine, like, you get shocked sometimes when you deal with it, sometimes with some of the Indians, that they're, they're not really motivated to see saints, but they're, but elephants and yeah. op opulence, that's another thing. But anyway, what motivated me? I, well, after Srila Prabhupada left, we, you know, we were very involved in distributing books and this and that. So that was going on for some time. But then uh, I noticed that all around me was total chaos. And, and in particular, in particular, a, a phenomena, not, I, I better refrain my speech, uh, uh, kind of curb it a little bit, because uh, Guru Marsh made some comments, like he said, like Vyasasans from the mountains to the sea at one time. In other words, everybody was in a position of, uh, of uh, such grandeur, you know, especially the new gurus, they're kind of writing a little bit riding roughshod, but I don't want to go back to days of yore. I'll just, just, just suffice to say that I really felt that, as Sheila Shidamar so many times commented, that in the absence of one's guru, one needs a Siksha guru. And I saw that the, in my eyes, the only Siksha guru available was Srila Sridhar Marsh. I didn't see any uh, anybody else who would be, in my eyes, somebody that you could take guidance from. Now I appreciated, I appreciated ISKCON as a society and everything that was Prabhupada's society, but I felt a little bit after his departure that there was something akin to a <laughs> there was something akin to a rudder missing. In other words, that the ship wasn't exactly on an even keel, to put it in nautical terms. So I I sought the guidance of Srila Sridhar Marsh, and that meant, so to speak, crossing the river, crossing the Ganga, going to, going over to, to uh, Nabadeep. But in this case, I didn't really cross the river because I. I had first touched down, came from America, and I was in in Vrindavan and at the at the uh, Krishna Balaram Mandir in, in in Vrindavan, and I took a train, a nice long train to Nabadeep, and there I went with uh, Srila Guru Maharaj and Srila. Govinda Maharaj, and I never went back. So uh, why I went and how I gave up Pratishta and all that, it was because I needed some guidance. Pratishta is not going to help you when you're feeling like you're, you know, if you're in the middle of the river and you're drowning, you know, and people saying, telling you, you know, how great you are. It doesn't really cut it so much when you're drowning. You want somebody, you want to, get out of the water, you want to, some, you know, you want to be saved. And then people would say, well, everything is there in Prabhupada's books. And then that's true. But one difference between a living guru and the books is maybe figuratively, the, well, 
lit or literally, the books cannot cannot take us necessarily by the shoulders and shake us and say, "Boy, you're not doing so well." You know, like that, like the like Gurudev can can do. Somebody can say, "Well, yes, the the Shastra can do that," but there's a saying that says. Uh, <clears throat> something to the effect that even the devil can quote quote the Bible or quote, quote Shastra. So anybody can read Shastra and interpret it according to their own desire or even misuse it according to their own desire. So Shastra in itself is divine. Sadhu Shastra Guru, we want all this. But you cannot, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at the time, when I'm, what is it? I'm, uh, I'm relatively very young. I mean, many of the gurus in ISKCON, they weren't even 30 years old. Mm. Nowadays, you get people who join the mission and are, and join the mission and are more years in the mission and older age when, after just, and they're relatively, you know, newcomers, and they had more t would have more time, more years, and more maturity and more age than even persons who were suddenly thrust into the position of being gurus. Because Srila Prabhupada, he left in 1977, and many of his many of his more uh, senior devotees had been in the mission less than 10 years and, and many of them weren't even of 30 years of age who were now gurus mm -hmm. not to diminish their importance heavens to heavens to what's it heavens to aunt murgatroyd that i would want to do that <laughs> but no it, 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 it was natural that pratistas or having some position is all very nice if it can enable you to do do service, but in order to do service, you want to be in an in an in a in an environment, a, a situation which is very conducive to your doing devotional service. Then, for instance, in the case of in the case of Madhavendra Puri, he was so honored in Ramuna, and people because well. He was afraid of being honored because the deity had stolen some kir for him and they gave it in the marketplace. So he immediately left during the night because he was afraid of getting pratishta. He left in the night and went to Jagannath Puri. And then there's a description in which your Govinda Maharaj also talk about this point, is that the honor, the pratishta of an important devotee ran faster than, than Madhavendra Puri could go to, to Jagannath Puri. So the pratishta preceded him somehow or other. In those days when they didn't have, when they didn't have email, when they didn't have uh, Skype, when they didn't have Zoom, when they didn't have telephones or telegraphs or or, you know, anything, somehow or other, his pratishta went faster than him. But that wasn't, for a person like Madhavendra Puri, that was not a detriment. That was, that was something that helped him because he was on a mission to get sandalwood paste, sandalwood for Gopal, his deity back in Vrindavan. Gopal had asked him to get sandalwood, and he was going to Puri to get that sandalwood and the reputation that preceded him from Ramuna to, to Jagannath Puri was very good because it enabled him to get, you know, costly sandalwood, which normally they wouldn't just give to a sadhu. They gave to him, they gave him the government papers, they gave him a carrier, they gave him everything because of the reputation he had as being an exalted saintly Vaishnav. That reputation enabled him to do the service that he was asked to do by Gopal, by his deity. So in that case, Pratishta was, we can't say that, you know, normally we'll say Kanak, Kamani, Pratishta, these are negative things. The di desire for the association of, of women or men or whatever it may be, you know, uh, Kamani, uh, Kanak, uh, Kanak is desire for wealth, and Pratishta is the desire for 
the desire for honor or prestige or fame. Normally, these things are considered to be great impediments. You know, sometimes we even hear, one time I was talking with Srila Govinda Maharaj, and I think in one of the early books of the Goswami Maharaj published, it mentioned a, a, the case of somebody who was previously, uh, you could say, addicted to drugs. And it was commented by Guru Marsh, I think it's commented there in the book, maybe in, uh, maybe in Sri Guru and His Grace, I don't know. But he's saying that, he's saying even addiction, it's not as a big a problem as Kanak Kamani and Pratishta. Because we can see that somebody may be addicted to drugs, but they can break that addiction. Even people who were addicts, and I've known, I've known devotees who in their, in their former life were addicted. They were addicts, addicted to drugs, but they were able to leave that behind. Saying he did this and he did that. And I told him, hey, I said, wait a minute. I remember you and me, you were much worse. You were much worse than what you're complaining about of your son. You were much worse than that. I told to my brother. <laughs> He said, you're complaining to him about this and this fault, and you were much worse than that. And I was much worse than that. And then years later, my brother remembered that. And he was, and he said, you defended my son. I did, yeah, I defended your son from you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he liked that, that I, he remembered that, and he liked that I had, de offend, I had defended his son. So sometimes we're annoyed that some of our younger devotees will be drinking or they'll, they'll be smoking or they'll be take, smoking pot. So we may think, oh, these are very bad things. But on the other hand, are they really so bad in the sense in the relative world if we consider what people were doing when we were young, you know? These, these activities are, I mean, you, you have to, one has to be able to, to at least see that, like as Govindamar said, he said, teenager can do anything. That was his remark here. <laughs> teenager can, can do anything. And it's true. So anyway, Guru Mars was saying that, that even addiction is not so bad compared to Kamini, Kanak, and Pratishta. Well, we should say Kanak, Kamini, and Pratishta, as Guru Maharaj says. Mm. Desire for wealth, the desire for, you know, enjoyment, especially sexual enjoyment, and the desire for Pratishta or fame. And Guru Maharaj says that all Kanak is meant for Narayan, all Kamini is meant for Krishna, and all Pratishta is meant for Gurudev, or Nityananda Prabhu, or, or Balaram, you know, we can say all. But in general, I want to, if I get some Pratishta, I want to be able to, to pass that on to my Guru. I, as Guru Mahar said, I am, a, I am a retailer. I'm a small retailer. And I'm doing some business with, with, with the, um, Pracha, what is it? The, I'm doing business with the holy name and preaching in the sense that I'm, I'm taking merchandise from the warehouse, which is Gurudev, and I'm distributing that. The holy name and preaching, I'm get, distributing that. But all, actually all, all fame is meant for Gurudev. So anyway, uh, to be honest, I was kind of I was kind of relieved leaving the atmosphere of being given so much pratishta because you feel like it's a weight around your neck that's dragging you down. It's not always it's not desirable, in my opinion. I mean, I, and when I came to Gurudev, then I, suddenly now, although I had. A, before some disciples, now everyone, everyone is being, we're 
we're initiating on Guru Maharaj's behalf and after he left on Govinda Maharaj's behalf and that is that was wonderful it's like you know then then we then we feel one feels encouraged and can pass on to them that responsibility and incidentally now i i'm also you know, feeling that way about about uh, Sheila Charya Marsh, in in many t instances, Sheila Govinda Marsh, and she, I mean Guru Marsh has written that preaching, you know, is also the trap. I mean, you know, there is a trap of, of, about the about the preacher. Sometimes, sometimes in the case that Guru Marsh said that. Okay, I'm in the I'm the acharya, in in Sokel. Sometimes somebody will ask me for initiation, and I can't. You can't avoid it. You can't avoid giving them initiation. But I I prefer to work in the mission and 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 say and and that acharya march is not named by Srila Govinda March as his successor, and that will be. Especially, we can see that he's sitting on the sitting on the seat of the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat. And somebody may say, "Well, he's not living in the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat because of the opposition." And I say, "That is that is not the consequence. The consequence is, all right. So there may have been quite a bit of what we would call dirty pool." You know, uh, cheat, cheating people and 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 ugly mentalities mentalities which were shown by people living and, and trying to usurp position of guru in 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 Navadip. but he but Acharya Mars is sitting in the position of the Acharya of the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Central, we would say especially Central Mat, that of Navadip, India, and etc., etc., etc. And certainly all over the world, in, in, in all of, we would say practically all of South America, many places in the world, all over the world, Russia, all kinds of countries. So anyway, I'm happy. I'm happy to relinquish any position of, you know, of taking or initiating or anything. I can do that even on behalf of a Acharya Mars if someone asks me. You know, I don't have a problem with that. And in general, I, I don't see why, I mean, obviously, like many other persons, I may be ambitious, but my ambition is more towards the idea is I want to be able to do some service. I want to de de do some service to Gurudev. And if I can, if I can, if anything, like I said to Srila, Prabhupada, when they asked for sannyas, he said, why do you want to take sannyas? I said, because I can't work with my god brothers. Now, people laugh at that, but what I actually meant is I want something of my own, some project of my own, something that I can do, that I can be head of, and I don't just have to answer to somebody like a school teacher, meaning, you know, or working in a temple, uh, did you brush your teeth this morning? Yes, yes, I brushed my teeth. Well, now time uh, for you to uh, lead the afternoon RT or something like that. Okay, that's very nice. I'm happy to sing afternoon RT. But I want to do some. I want to do some work. You know, singing in the temple, maybe somewhat of, of work, and eating prasada, maybe service. But I want to do some real service. I want to do something. You know. So being a sannyasi, you know, it's like being, it's like being a general. You, generals are supposed to do something. They're not just supposed to sit back and take maha, maha plates. 
<coughs> they're supposed to do something. So that is what I meant. And one time, even when Govinda Maharaj was, tra was present, I, I traveled through, I was traveling on the plane and somebody I knew who was, a, who was the daughter of a disciple that I had from when I was in Iskon. She came to me and she said, um, I want you to chant on my beads or I don't know, she said, give me a name or something. Uh, and I said, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it on behalf of Sheila Govinda Marsh. And she said, I don't want to take, I don't want, I don't want from Govinda Marsh, I want from you. That's what she said. So in that situation, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to say, no, you have to take from Sheila Govinda Marsh. I didn't. So I said, okay, give me your beads. So I chanted on them here, you know, and then, then whatever. Luckily, and I was very happy to find, hear this, I found out that a few a year or two later, I found out she'd actually um, gotten name and initiation from Sheila Govinda Marsh. But at the time, she had told me, you know, that she. So I'm. Sometimes it will be that the 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 reputation or the preaching. It's not the reputation. The preaching of a preacher sometimes leads to getting trapped. And Srila Govinda Mars, Srila Guru Mars said that. Now, in our mission, Grihastas don't initiate. They don't give formal uh, diksha. Govinda Mars, I was talking with him. He said, ladies and, and Grihastas, they don't initiate in our mission. But, that, but that's, a form, that's just diksha guru. That doesn't mean they can't be siksha gurus. Siksha guru is worshipped as much as diksha guru. But, you know, if if I'm in a position where Govinda Maharaj said that he's giving back to me, that when I came to him, he he gave, uh, I gave to him, I had the charge of guru and initiating people. And when I joined with Govinda Maharaj, I, I um, then initiated on his behalf. And when he's leaving this world, he says, now I'm returning that to you meaning you do this. I'm returning that responsibility to you. So when, when, when somebody says, and specifically that they want that for me, then I, then I, then I, I feel myself unworthy, but I'll do that. And I'm just explaining in, in, in practical terms, since the question was, how did you leave the Pratishta of the ISKCON and you come to Guru Maharaj's mission? I'm just mentioning what the history has been. It was Govinda Maharaj when he left like 11 years ago. And, and in some cases, people were specifically asked, asked to take initiation. And I don't really want to do that so much. I don't want necessarily, uh, you know, I don't necessarily look for that. And, 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 you know, maybe I shouldn't even, I should hold my mouth, but even I'll even say that Govinda Maharaj once said, my father was, was a guru in, in, in Bamanpar. So he says, I know how dirty this business is. <laughs> he was saying it in the sense of what it means sometimes to to be in the position of a pratishta, it's not it's not something desirable. Why would what? Why would somebody want pratishta? All right. So as I was saying, why would anybody? Why would you know? All right. It's it's very very beautiful and very responsible that one takes responsibility for another person and tries to give some, them some shelter and guidance as much as one can. But why would, why would anybody want the position of, of, of taking, taking pratishta or taking? I was very happy when I came to the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat 
that now though now I'm preaching on Govinda Maharaj's behalf. Because I came in eighty seven, Govinda Maharaj was already seated as the Acharya. Although I did get did get um Sanyas Mantra name from Guru Maharaj, but still Govinda Maharaj, that was an exception. Govinda Maharaj was already the Acharya. So I really I really wanted to take shelter of Guru Maharaj, of Srila Srila Maharaj, and then subsequently from Srila Govinda Maharaj. And that was part of the conversation. When when Trivikram Maharaj asked me to come back from Miska, and I said, oh, I'll ask Govinda Maharaj. And he said, oh, that means that you're not a street dog. You You have a master. I told him, that's exactly what it means. I'm not a street dog. I do have a master. So I didn't want to be a street dog, even though I must be may may have been a very pedigreed pratishta code street dog with a uh, you know or as they would say uh, what is it mono de seda mono secada is that how they say it it means they, they say yeah. Uh, they say uh, also, also the monkey wears a uh, silk they steal it the monkey. monkey mono vestido they say the yeah. mono cicada even a monkey who's dressed in silk is still it still is a monkey still is a monkey <laughs> <laughs> mono vestido they say the mono cicada so even though I might, might, may have been uh, a very pedigreed street dog, still a street dog, so I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a street dog. I wanted to have a master. What dog would not want to have a master? So having a good master in, in terms of, in, to, in terms of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, that's, that's really what we're talking about. You have to have a master. You can't just be without a master. It's not a, really not an option. Is anyone arguing that point? I think it's pretty self-evident, right? Any comment? Do you have a comment on that, uh, David Sheesh? No, it's completely right, Maharaj. Yeah, first, first principle of Gaudiya Vaishnavism is to accept a spiritual master. All right. Somebody, somebody said, "Well, you had Prabhupada." Yes, I had Prabhupada. I have, I not just had. I still have Prabhupada. Yeah. Okay. You have Prabhupada. Then Prabhupada said he's there in his books. Aren't the books sufficient? Well, maybe if I was a postgraduate, self-realized, you know, uh, uh, Vaishnava who was ninety years old and all his spiritual masters had left this world, then maybe that maybe I, somebody could make that point, you know. You're in uh, also, well, there's no option. No, somebody says, well, he's there in his books. Okay. And when, how old was I when, when Srila Prabhupada left? Let's see. I was, I was actually older than most of the devotees. So let's see, except for maybe Rupa Nuga. That was 1977. Oh, I was a ripe old age of 32 years old. <laughs> <clears throat> 32 years old now I'm, I'm still young now I'm only 76 <laughs> but then I was 32 77, 45 55, 32 years old and the, my, my most of my Guru God brothers, they were under 30, in their mm. 20s, seasoned veterans. <laughs> so I can be, I'm joking a little bit, but I really felt like, as Guru Maharaj said, when one's, in the absence of one's spiritual master, one needs a Siksha Guru. That's completely true. Somebody can say, "Well, you don't, you don't need, you, you don't need to have a sexual guru." Oh, 
Like they say in a court of law, a person, what is it? A person can hire a barrister or a lawyer or one can represent himself. But if one represents himself, especially when in, in interrogation, prosecution, and everything, if one represents oneself, then one, then unfortunately one, one can be one's own lawyer or barrister, but one has a fool for a, one has a fool for a client. <coughs> I mean, you, I, I actually knew one person <coughs> who was arrested and offered offered a deal where he could take a plea bargain because he actually was guilty of the charge. He could take a, a plea bargain and go to jail for two years and or he could, you know, fight the case. So he studied he studied law and everything for some time to represent himself in court. So he did that. He represented himself instead of uh, taking the two-year plea bargain. The result was he was sentenced to 15 years. Ouch. A little difference between two years and 15 years. And he actually had to serve most of that term. So the saying may also be, one can, one can get a lawyer or one can represent oneself, but when one represents oneself, one has often, in this case, in the case of a de devotee representing themselves, we can say one can be one's own guru, but then one has a fool for a disciple. <laughs> because you being your own guru, Nowhere ever is that going to be very a good result. Never. Forget about it. <laughs> Just forget that idea. You don't need a guru. If somebody tell if if anybody like if if if, if Prabhupada ever said in in some case I know he said to somebody you don't need a guru. That's like a real slap across the face. That means you're so stupid, you're so out of it, you're so dumb that you think you don't need a guru. That means you're fit for being eaten by dogs and vultures. That's what that means. But calming down a little bit. <laughs> I, was hap I'm, I was very happy to take shelter of Guru Mars. Marge, I've got another question for you, just been sent to me. Okay. From our from A Anonymous again. A are there ben are there any benefits of staying up all day and night without sleep on Ikadashi? Uh, as per my vision, none. But anyway. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe somebody who's really maybe if someone's really interested in I don't know. Maybe somebody do does that, but it seems to me somebody doing that, they would be more interested in form rather than substance. I mean, why rob yourself of energy if it means you're going to be incapable of functioning for the next three days? But, I mean, it's not to say that the advanced Vaishnavas, like maybe... Maybe Gorkishore does Babaji or someone like that who would do that, that, they, that there was anything wrong with them doing that. They're exalted, so that was their choice of how to observe Akadasi. But that's, but Guru Maharaj never emphasized that. He said he never emphasized any of those forms of um, engagement on Akadasi, fasting all day or not sleeping when when that would interfere with person's service and that would interfere with their ability because i mean you know what do you what is what is the purpose of somebody fasting and not uh sleeping on a codicy is it a purpose that 
they're trying to drastically increase their service for the Lord, well then that's very admirable. But is it being done in the sense of one's exaggerated idea of what one thinks would be a fitting punishment for a codice or a fitting engagement for a codice? Will that interfere with somebody doing service? I mean, Guru, Guru Mars didn't emphasize that because he saw that people have to be properly situated, engaged in service and continuing with their responsibilities. <coughs> so doing that kind of thing on a codice in Guru Mars's eyes is not really uh, desirable, so to speak. So as a, as being in the Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, and we heard from Guru Maharaj why it wasn't a good idea to do that, I would say following in his line that I would have to say no. I don't think it's such a good idea to fast and not sleep on a codice because mm. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that being a positive thing by Guru Maharaj. Would you agree with that? David Sheesh? Yes, Maharaj. And in fact, I remember that um, at one time, so the devotees, you know, there's that book about the glories of Ikadashi, which tells about each Ikadashi, what the benefits are that you can get from following Ikadashi Vrata on this particular Ikadashi. And, uh, and at, the, um, at Guru Maharaj's Samadhi on the Ikadashi day, one of the devotees was reading about that particular Ikadashi. And Srila Gurudev came, Srila Govinda Maharaj came there and saw what they were reading or heard what they were reading. And he said, no, we do not read this because this is Karma Kanda. We're not interested in the benefits, Karma Kanda benefits of Ikadasi. We are interested in giving pleasure to the Lord, increasing our service to the Lord. That's all. Mm -hmm. But what about if someone observed that and could win the lottery? <laughs> well, maybe that would be the exception, perhaps. <laughs> and does Mr. Um, does Mr. Anonymous have any other question? Well, nothing has nothing been sent at the moment, so. That's from a anonymous. Yes. Nothing from B anonymous. <laughs> so now it's it's getting on in the day for on in the night for you guys, and you have Nityananda Nityananda Prabhu's divine appearance tomorrow. So I don't want to draw yes. this out too much longer because. I really want the devotees to be able to participate in Nityananda Triodasi. I think Acharya Maharaj will also be broadcasting and etc. Um, any other questions? So we'll end here. Saraswati Didi. You're you're afraid of talking without starting the echo chamber, right? Sorry, Maharaj, we have a problem with the audio. So it, I don't sounds, wanna... it sounds fine right now. No, it's fine because I have two computers uh, uh, connected. So one is for audio and one is for the video. Oh, so that's very intelligent. That's good. <laughs> That's that's what I had to do when I was with um, when I was with um, Puri Marish. We had two computers, and those kind of problems that you're having are because generally because of two computers. Not the solution is one for audio and one for video, but the problem exists because having two computers in the same room. That, the echo comes from that, that having the sound on. <clears throat> oh, uh, Ananda Sudupini has a question. Okay. Writing it on the on the chat. 
Let's see, chat. There's two things on the chat. And no, and I saw earlier that we had um, uh, Lakshmi Kanti, but, but okay. Yes, I'm here. I'm still here, Maharaj. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. Now, here's our question. I don't know where to send the questions, but what about when our guru leaves this plane in the future? Do we pick one person as a Siksha guru or consider everyone to be like a Siksha guru and in general, always anyway? I, I believe the question of who that one, one would take refuge in, in, in as a Siksha guru would be that would be a very personal consideration. Now, if we see that there's someone present in this world who's, who is, you know, guiding our mission and everything like that, then obviously we can, we can look to, to that person. What do I do here? I'm, look, I'm changing, okay, chat, all right, there. Anyway, who is who one chooses as a Siksha Guru? I, I believe that's going to be based on the inspiration that comes from from one's heart and one's necessity. Now, in the case of when Govinda Maharaj was present, there was no dis really no discussion because <coughs> one one would want the most qualified Vaishnav to, uh, you know, one would want to, you know, pass on the responsibility of guidance to someone who is personally signaled by, in this case, by Guru Maharaj, who he wanted people to take shelter of. So that, that came up and, and but I would say normally in the absence of one's guru, who would one choose as one's Siksha guru? That will be, it has to be some, come from some inspiration from within. But your question was, this was from uh, Ananda Swarupini. Then let me see the wording again. I just clicked off the chat. Here it is. Um, do we pick one person as a Siksha Guru or, or consider everyone to be like a Siksha Guru and in general, any, always anyway? Um, I don't know if you, if, if there's someone, if there's someone that, that, you're seeing who is giving you uh, special guidance and you feel that you have taken shelter of that person, maybe a particular devotee, maybe somebody that you know, maybe someone, maybe someone in the temple or somebody that you're contacting, etc., that you feel is giving you siksha, giving you guidance. And then why will, why will we, we won't try to legislate that. I mean, the reason I'm saying this, some some consideration came up <coughs> in respect to, for instance, Vishaka. That persons wanted to take some guidance from Vishaka. And whereas, as far as she's not in a she's not in a position where she will be initiating because in our mission the, that position is is of initiating guru is not is not normally given to ladies maybe in the absence of of anyone else qualified but it's not given to ladies but if someone felt inspired to take guidance from her why would we try to legislate that? Why would we say, no, she can't do that? No, obviously, obviously, if someone feels that inspiration, they can take guidance from her. And in general, I will say, 
Someone can take guidance from another, another devotee, but one should also be mature in one's considerations. Like somebody who maybe doesn't have any real, like, well, I don't know how to phrase this. Prabhupada one time said, he said, um, regarding the matter of common sense, he said, use your common sense, and if you don't have any, ask someone who does. So if you can judge, if you can decide maturely, then, and you have good common sense, and you can talk with other devotees and get guidance from them, then you can maybe proceed on the basis of getting some guidance and then decide how, who, what you want to do and whom you want to take shelter. I'm talking about siksha. There may be somebody that's giving, giving siksha, living in the temple or this or that. You know, I would not say that, I would not say anything like, for instance, David Sheesh, I feel I, 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 I'm, I go to London and I very much like for instance, his preaching, I think he preaches very nice. It reminds me of, you know, it reminds me of, you know, he's knowledgeable about what Guru Mars had to say. So when I'm there, if he gives a class or something, I like hear, hearing him talk. I think it's nice. No? Now, Labanya Moyi. Saraswati and others, they're good servitors. They've, they've served faithfully for many years. So I'm sure that somebody's new and they ask questions, I, I would feel, yes, these devotees are, are, are mature enough to be able to, to help one, you know, give them some guidance. So now you may say, well, Okay, but now we're talking about Siksha Guru, we're not just talking about guidance. Okay, but it's a matter of, it's a matter of, Govinda uh, Mahar said that, or Guru Mars, I believe it was, said that Guru is the inspired side of a Vaishnav. Isn't that right? Yes. So, Different persons can inspire one. It may be, in the case of some people, that they get inspired by someone who's not necessarily qualified to guide, but they don't know that because they're lacking in discretion. And somebody will say, well, what is the situation in that case? And I can say, well, you know, it's a question of your own Sukriti. So the question of your own Sukriti, what you're going to, where you're going to wind up, what you're going to get, huh? <clears throat> everything like that. If you're there and you have a question regarding Sukriti and guidance, you can ask one of the mature devotees. You can write to Acharya Maris. He's not in, in he's not in uncommunicable. Okay. Anyway, I'm answering these questions. Thank you, Ma. Huh? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. So, any other questions? Someone has a raised hand, Ram SJ, it says. That's Ram, Ramananda from San Jose. Ah. You can see him in the corner. Well, you can, in my corner, but he's there with the beard. Oh, yeah, I see. He's become a bearded devotee. It's okay. Chaturma is coming. So. <laughs> well, it hasn't started yet. How, what do you yeah. got to say yeah. to that? All right. <laughs> so, could you explain like a uh, Krishna Lord says, Acharya Maam Vijani Ham? So, no, I, I'm not going to explain because I, because it's now it's now 8.30 at night in London 
Uh -huh. This is a London. So I was going to end here because they have Nityananda Prabhu's divine appearance tomorrow. So we have to kind of, so to speak. Okay. Have, we can talk yeah. some other time. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you, all the oh. devotees. Dandavati Dandava you, Ramananda. Hope you're well. Dandavati Saraswati Didi, all the Vaishnavas. Pranasi. That's next week. Okay. So is that it for today, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. So we'll see you next, as someone said, next week. But we'll also see you tomorrow, depending on uh, means of broadcast. For me to tune in, I'll be pretty, I'm going to be pretty busy in the morning. We'll see what happens. I hope everyone's well, everyone's keeping safe. Yeah. Jai Mahesh. So everyone's, get, everyone's getting inoculated, right? And becoming yeah, I got <laughs> I got getting inoculated and becoming innocuous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dandava pranams to all of you. Dandava pranams, Maharaj. Dandava pranams. Jai, Srila Bhakti Pavan Janaran Maharaj. Jai. 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 Dandava. Thank you. Dandava, Dandava Saraswati. Thank you, Maharaj. Dandava, Maharaj. Dandava. Dandava. See you soon. Thank you, Maharaj. Dandava pranams. Dandava Saraswati Didi.